browsers. <laughs> Otherwise, they should start doing the feedback inside our meeting. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, doing that. I'll okay, so it's eleven thirty. Uh, we won't get started on time. Uh, welcome everyone to our webinar today. Uh, it's going to be really engaging. We are, we are four of us today. Uh, I'm Sanjay Dalal, the founder and CEO of Ogoi. Uh, our webinar is co-hosted uh, with Think AI. And uh, let me introduce uh, the Think AI team here, uh, Sarika Goyal and Manish Bardia. Uh, Sarika, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. I'm really excited to be here. I'm the project lead here at Think AI. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the webinar today by Yash, uh, our guest speaker on RPA. Um, okay, thanks, thanks, Sanjay. Thank you, Sarika, for joining. And we have Manish Bardia, the CEO of uh, Think AI. Manish, how are you doing? Sanjay, I'm good and glad to be hosting the RPA session with uh, Ogoing. Looking forward to more of more in this series. And uh, my name is Manish here at Think AI. I'm the president and uh, we work in the latest technology like artificial intelligence, RPA, business intelligence, chatbot. So yes, looking to looking more for uh, yes to share his knowledge and then thanks for joining. Absolutely. Uh, I saw one of the messages on chat that they cannot see the video. Is, is everybody seeing the video, all of our attendees? If you are, uh, please uh, give us a quick chat message that yes, you can see the video or not. Uh, let me send out uh, to... Okay, so Anil replied, yes, we can see. Joyce is saying we can see. Thank you. Thank you for the confirmation, uh, confirmation on that. Uh, uh, folks, these are tough times. Uh, before we start our webinar, I want to uh, do a quick, uh, you know, 10 second uh, silence uh, and a prayer for for everyone who has been impacted by the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 80,000 folks have, have unfortunately perished in, in our country here in the U.S. and almost a quarter million worldwide. This, these are challenging times and, and you know, uh, we are fortunate uh, to do a live webinar with you all today, uh, but let's not forget, you know, everybody's uh, kindness, everybody's hard work, especially the frontline workers uh, who are really working hard to keep us safe and healthy. And uh, just wanted to do a quick, uh, you know, 10 seconds of, uh, you know, silence for everybody, if you all join me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we have a, a really good webinar today with uh, Yash Vakaria. Uh, let me introduce Yash to you. You know, I've known Yash over the last, I would say, almost uh, two years now, at least, uh, in Irvine. Uh, uh, met him actually at one of the Super Bowl parties hosted by Manish. Uh, it was a chance meeting, and I've since uh, since then known him. Uh, or, you know, over the uh, last few years, uh, so it's it's great to know him. Uh, he is, uh, Yash Vakaria has extensive industry experience, you know, with top fortune companies, uh, including Cognizant, J&J, uh, &J, GE, and, and Janpact. Uh, importantly, he's a digital transformation enthusiast, if you may. Uh, uh, tremendous expertise in RPA, uh, which is uh, robotic process automation. Uh, and he's going to talk more about our main topic of the webinar today: cloud as well as enterprise apps. So, so he's he's uh, he's the go-to, I would say, consultant as well as uh, you know, uh, professional that you can go to for all three: RPA, cloud, and enterprise. But I asked, yes, what is something people don't know about? And and I'm glad he shared with us. Uh, on the personal front, he's he's a fitness enthusiast. Uh, you will see him doing yoga, but importantly. I guess once this pandemic is done, a lot of tennis. He's a tennis lover. Yes, uh, you can find him on tennis courts in Irvine. Uh, so on that note, Yes, did you ever play professional tennis or this is all, all for fun? <laughs> Mostly for fun, but I used to play professional tennis uh, back when I was under 14. Oh, wow. and was my state level uh, number three. State level number three. And on what, what state would that be? I'm curious. Now that, now that you asked... <laughs> Uh, Gujarat in India. So I was back back in the day when I was uh, growing up. 
in school. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. That was a very lovely introduction. Loved it. Thank you, Yash. Uh, the podium is yours, so we'll, uh, we will have you uh, share uh, a few things about RPA. Uh, uh, you know, at any time, Manish, Sarika, or I will, uh, will come in and, and ask you a question here and there. Uh, we want to make it interactive, Yash. And, and the same thing with folks here who have signed in. Really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for doing that. And if you have any questions for Yash as he's sharing, uh, you know, uh, his insights, uh, just send them via chat or via the Q&A icon at the, at the bottom of the screen. And we'll be happy to take your questions uh, both during as well as after the, uh, after the talk with Yash. Uh, Yash, uh, the podium is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Sanjay. So very uh, glad to be here and thanks for this opportunity, Sanjay. Uh, and we will be uh, taking the audience through um, journey of introduction of RPA. Uh, but before we get started, just a quick example. Uh, most of our guests are from uh, manufacturing industry. I would like to um, thank everyone for participating. Uh, let's look at, uh, you know, a real life scenario where a purchase manager coming to office, you know, um, checking out a few uh, reports, calling, uh, logging into two, three applications, uh, calling his uh, warehouse, checking for inventory report and uh, finally preparing um, an inventory report that shows uh, what are his next tasks today. 30 minutes of the day, nice uh, to-do list created. Grab a cup of coffee and get started. Flip it, flip it around. Let's look at in a, uh, with a different lens. 30 minutes before uh, he's going to start, the, start his job, um, something on his laptop wakes up, does exactly, goes to all those four systems, pulls out data, uh, sorts and makes the pivot reports, makes the charts that he's looking for, boom, 30 minutes done. When the person is logging in, the day is different for him. First half an hour of work done with insightful information ready on his fingertips. Wow. That's the power of robotics process automation. We'll see how far it goes in. Let me share the, uh, some slides that can help us take us through this. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I think we have already gone through uh, some of the introductions here. So directly jumping into our agenda today, uh, we'll go through what is RPA, uh, why it is important, what does it bring on table, a uh, few use cases applicable to our situations, and uh, we'll have uh, uh, some of the Q&A session dedicated time for that. So for, uh, as we uh, jump into this, what is RPA? Uh, it is a software program that automates repetitive manual actions, a full process or a partial process. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, the everything. It can be one part of a very long process. Uh, the key and most exciting part of uh, RPA is it works across platforms and applications. It does not depend on uh, let's say Excel, or it can log into ERP application. It can go to web applications. It can wait for a uh, human intervention, human action. Once approved, it can get started over again, regardless of the platform and applications. It is also known as um, intelligent process automation or rapid process automation. Now, the moment uh, robotics word comes in, people tend to you know, imagine a walking or talking robot, but it is not. It is not a physical computer, physical machine. Um, and more importantly, it's not artificial intelligence or vo uh, voice recognition like Alexa. Does it make sense? But yes, uh, you know, if I may interject, I know that AI and ML can actually, sorry, artificial intelligence and machine learning can actually help RPA though, right? They can work in complement to each other. 
Excellent point, uh, Sanjay. So um, many experts in the industry think that um, RPA is a transitional technology that is helping us go from manual uh, tasks and some of the work that is happening around uh, in applications to more uh, self-driven artificial intelligence where computers can take their own decisions. Uh, as far as I think, and uh, my view is that this is a technology that is here to stay, coexist with AI and ML. It is collecting data for all those processes and data is the key drivers for decision-making for AI. Does it help? Absolutely, absolutely, thank you. So uh, with that introduction, I, uh, I would like to um, take it to the next step on why an organization should consider um, RPA as one of the strategy. If you look at it, RPA is one of the very critical, crucial uh, technology today for enabling uh, digital transformation. And digital transformation is enabled using multiple uh, list of technology, AI, ML, RPA is one of the top three in that entire list. And um, the business case for RPA is so compelling today that each and every CXO is including RPA in their digital uh, strategy for uh, last two years and for many years to come. Uh, although there are many aspects on um, what are the key benefits I would say I would like to highlight three uh, major points. First of all, uh, RPA brings immediate and lasting results in terms of uh, cost savings, quick deployment, and error avoidance. Um, we'll, see, we'll see that in detail in subsequent slides uh, in the examples. Um, second most important point is that um, RPA or if you talk about automations, it has been existing for decades. It's, it's not a new thing that you, know, you go and automate something. But imagine most of the people were automating this in the past using, let's say, uh, one application. If you want to automate something in Excel, you would write a macro to do that thing. Um, an IT person would probably write a batch script that will you know, uh, pick up the files, process it, and send it to the next. And limited fashion, it has been existing across the board. Um, what RPA doing is, it is practically making um, this automation process centrally governed and independent of platforms and people. Say tomorrow, um, one of the person leaves with his laptop, that Excel sheet as well as uh, the bash program that he had is gone. With RPA, it is centrally governed under your control and it is here to stay. You can use it as a strategy across the organization, either centrally or distributed. And third most, most important uh, point I would say is it is elevating human uh, tasks by eliminate, eliminating some of the repetitive mundane tasks and giving the power of uh, data driven decision-making in the hands of our employees. So uh, absolutely compelling um, case for RPA. No wonder it is growing leaps and bounds. The percentages are in 50s and 60s consistently every year, this market uh, growing. Uh, let's look at some of the uh, use cases where it is being used and most popular in the industry today. Um, in terms of uh, industry applications, they are absolutely every industry is uh, using RPA for uh, multiple things, but there are some common cases. I would like to touch upon the most popular ones. Uh, primarily uh, automating some of the legacy software. See, every, every uh, company has made some investments over a period of time. Those uh, applications become uh, obsolete, but overnight they cannot change it. 
overnight, not every application can go on cloud. So uh, RPA comes into the picture to help uh, integrate and bridge that gap between the legacy and older applications with the cloud applications. Data integration across platforms, as we talked about uh, you know, uh, earlier, uh, let's say you need application uh, data from Excel to another uh, backend system, data integration across platforms with certain limitations, RPA can help very quickly. Data entry chair, chair swivels across uh, multiple applications and automating multi-step business process. So um, if I may interject, Yash, it sounds awesome what RPA can do for a business as well as an individual working at a company. I mean, is this uh, is this more for managers or it, it can also help like individuals, you know, like out, let, let's say out in the field or, uh, you know, uh, more like employees. I mean, where does it make the most uh, dent, if you may? Sure, Sanjay. Um, it... Uh, in terms of who it can help in the organization, I would say um, at every level, there is an application. Especially if you look at uh, top level CEOs and uh, CXOs minus one, um, most of the um, use cases that we have seen in the industry is an automated report and dashboards. Most of the times, um, the leaders are dependent on multiple departments and waiting for their inputs before they can have insightful information. And many of these information are, you know, uh, available weekly or daily basis. Um, and it can be automated with RPA process so that he or she does not have to depend on people to get this information. Um, if you look at process level, when day-to-day -day tasks are there, um, in each and every person's, when this becomes a culture with the company, uh, every person can come up with an uh, use case. And we actually invite uh, people to come up with a use case that we can demo and try to automate and in, uh, take it to the next level of you know, starting the automation journey. Got it. Thank you. Yes. Um, so just want to drill down on one particular example to give uh, more insight in terms of uh, you know, how, uh, how we can automate and what RPA can offer. Let's look at, uh, let's look at an application where um, data is needed from a legacy application on the cloud, a CRM application. Contact information is residing in old uh, legacy system and uh, sales users are using a CRM application on the cloud. Now, if you think about in um, no, no RPA era, in that case, most of the times IT would come back stating that, you know, we need to build an interface. We need two developers for let's say two weeks, one month and uh, do testing, deploy. The same job can be done by RPA. Now we are talking about recording a step to log in to the older application. That's recorded step goes to the next level of entering the data to the next Excel sheet, complete the review and post it to uh, your CRM application. Every hour, every day, whatever changes happens, this bot can do it for you. And there is no code needed. We are talking about hours as compared to weeks of uh, application helping you. So it does, in this particular example, it does preserve your investments into the older system. It does the data integration and also enables us to do it faster, quicker with compliance. A um, couple of more points here is um, there are integrations available with uh, computer vision technology and uh, document reading capabilities. And these are a couple of most used use cases across industry, especially if you look at manufacturing, if there is a, a vendor payment needed, the vendor purchase order that comes in is automatically read by OCR. Uh, that is, um, here we are talking about the Elasti OCR integration available, available out of the box. 
and the document can be entered into an application by the RPA without human intervention. So um, that's, that's the power we are talking about. Many other potential use cases and process, uh, processes that can be automated. And we are looking for day in, day out, more and more use cases are coming up. So wow. yes, uh, one of the use cases or the most important one uh, in manufacturing is uh, is BOM or bill of materials. And, you know, for the manufacturer, you know, take an example like, like Tesla, right? Do they make amazing electric cars? So if they have a particular BOM for, you know, let's say making the next generation of uh, cyber trucks, you know, going with the same example. I mean, how important that is, you know, from an RPA point of view, I mean, can RPA really make this uh, very complex BOM for let's say procuring all the potential parts they need to, to launch their cyber truck on time, let's say 2022, I mean, how can RPA be even relevant in that? Uh, excellent question, Sanjay. And uh, this goes back to our example of multi-step business process. So bill of material defines um, how many uh, vendors you, do, you need to contact, what is the, how many parts are needed. And the entire process goes uh, from, you know, approvals, purchase orders, uh, checking the inventory, multiple process. It's a multi-process step. Um, the way to get started with uh, our RPA can definitely help here. Uh, the way to get started is there is something called disaggregation process disaggregation step. That's generally the first step in RPA implementation. You look at the entire process, break it down the break down the workflow, and identify uh, each and every step, which step is automatable and which step is not. Generally, what we have seen across the board, uh, we give an automation index, and that index is what percentage of the entire processes can be automated. And it can coexist with certain steps to be uh, still remaining the way it is. C certain steps may need human intervention, but maybe 50 to 70% process can be automated. And imagine the power of automation and the quickness with which you can do this automation. If you can automate 50 to 70% of your application, uh, of your entire process, uh, what benefits it can bring? Great point, Yash. Thank you, yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I think you already talked about a little bit on how to get started with RPA with your question. Uh, that was a great segue Sanjay. Um, so I, I would say, uh, power automate brings to the table, some of the key features to get started in, uh, in a very, very short time at a very, very low cost. Um, uh, and in certain cases, the demos and, uh, you know, proof of concepts are done free for the customer. Uh, power automate, um, as we have seen in most of these processes, there are, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, Word and Excel involved in terms of documentation. Um, what power automate does is because of its, uh, Microsoft, uh, product, it is deeply integrated, natively integrated with the entire ecosystem. Second, most important point is with any RPA solution you can do a demo with one laptop, two laptops, but eventually you want to make sure the entire um, automation across your org organization is hosted centrally. So you need uh, a cloud uh, hosting solution along with it. Best part about uh, Power Automate is it comes along with the Azure support. And it is coming up with uh, pre-built templates and Multi, multiple connectors. And these connectors help uh, build the automation in the shortest possible uh, time with maximum number of applications. And these are one of the few of the key uh, critical aspects of deciding which platform to go with for RPN, how to get started. And Microsoft has made it very easy for the customer. Um, so that's where any, um, we can talk about any specific points or, uh, you know, uh, take some of the critical questions that have come across. 
Yes, so this is Manisha. There was a question regarding an example when you were covering by Joyce. So I don't know if Joyce is able to speak or uh, that that question or the example what you provided answers her question. So that was one of the question we had. If anybody else has a question, please type in. So the question was, uh, can you give an example of the last bullet point? And I'm missing the last bullet point. So Joyce, if you can type what was your specific question, we can address that. But yeah, just uh, while, while more questions are coming, wanted to reiterate that with uh, Microsoft ecosystem and the ease of use on Power Automate, it's very easy to subscribe or try out the application. And yes, you had the slide, right? Like there are already 15 or 150 templates already available, something like that to get started. So that becomes, yeah, if you just go back a slide. Right, so simple example, right? Saving your attachment to OneDrive or getting notification based on the certain task. All that can be automated and these templates already exist. So yes, we have given a try and it's pretty good. But uh, as Yash men mentioned, it will be very easy for you to give it a try without knowing too much on RPA. You can right away go ahead and start trying. Yeah, I think Joyce was uh, talking about the multi-step uh, business process and how you can automate with RPA. I think Yash uh, mentioned that during the, the BOM uh, you know, process that we talked about, the bill of materials. Uh, yeah, but yes, you can add to that. That was the bullet point that she was referring to. Yeah, absolutely, Sanjay. As you mentioned, I think uh, multi-step business process and your question was absolutely spot on, where bill of material is one of those processes, which is multi-step, uh, which requires uh, human intervention, some of the external steps that cannot be automated and some of the steps that can be automated. The beauty of um, RPA is seen in this example is that it can uh, automate the entire process end to end um, across multiple platforms. It can wait in the middle for human intervention. And the process does not have to be 100%. All the steps needs to, uh, needs to be automated. So that's where um, BOM is the process. One of the other processes uh, purchase order and accounts payable, uh, automated check disbursement, reading of a document and entering in different systems. These are a few examples where, you know, uh, especially for uh, accounts payable, when document is automatically read and entered in the system before the check is dispersed, you actually need approval based on the amount. And it goes and waits for the human intervention of that approval then the next step of check printing is uh, done before the payment is dispersed. So that's, that's, a, that's another example where it's a multi-step process, um, multiple systems, but uh, RPA can automate 70% of this application. Excellent. I think I don't have, think uh, yeah. Go have, ahead. I don't think we have any other questions, so let's keep going and wrap up yeah uh, yeah I, I think one other thing uh, i had in mind uh, uh, yash and manish you can both help on that is is the ease of deployment right for a small business or a, let's say a small manufacturer is this is this rocket science i mean what is the ease of deploying an rpa system using power automate or something similar i mean are we talking about months here years i mean what, What's the thought process? Um, Sanjay, that's the first question comes to mind for whoever wants to invest and get started. I would say um, it, it depends on what process you are trying to automate. It can go from uh, indeed individual process like let's say I want to try it out on my laptop. Tomorrow morning, I want to, every morning I want one particular report. I automate it running on my machine. It, from there, it can talk about process of bill of material where you have to complete uh, the diagram of the entire process and identify which ones will go for automation and when do you want to do it. Individual steps in that particular uh, process, recording and deploying, we are talking about two to four hours. 
But if you to uh, add up all these steps uh, in a multi-step process, it can go for let's say 10 hours or 20 hours. But on on um, once we have identified the cloud hosting, uh, which platform we want to go with, uh, identifying individual cases and starting to automate, we are talking about hours and definitely uh, num pro probably a couple of days. It is not a weeks and months project or like an ERP where you know it can Perfect. take six months. Perfect. So I, I guess at this point, uh, Manish, we can do a quick intro about Think AI and all going, and then uh, do the poll, I guess, uh, the survey. Sarika? Absolutely. So, Yash, can you bring up the. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'll just uh, cover that quickly. Okay, let me go to the uh, slide of thank you, please. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure we get the survey done from participants. Uh, uh, go to the go to that quick... pink slide, uh, yeah. Yash, before that, number 20. Number 20, okay. And if you can just project project that and then we'll cover the... Yes. Yeah, that, that's good enough. Okay, so thanks everyone. Just 30 seconds on 